My first guest is aging on her own terms, boldly and unapologetically. She was an original supermodel, the face of the 80s, and one of Vogue's modern muses, ruling catwalks and ad campaigns since she was a baby at 17 years old, now 56. Paulina Poroskova is a fierce advocate of unfiltered, ageless self-love, especially on social media. In the same week, she posted about getting treatment for wrinkles around her eyes because she was, quote, wants to be pretty. Paulina also posted this jaw-dropping lingerie picture with the hashtag, sexy has no expiration date. And joining us from her home in New York City is Paulina Poroskova. Welcome to the show. So good to have you on. Hi, thanks. I gotta tell I get great pleasure looking at your social media and all of the things that you post. I gotta take you to this incredible photo. I thought it was just beautiful and raw. And there were some negative comments from people who said things like, you are far too desperate for attention. Celebrating our aging in this empowering way rubs a nerve with some people. Why do you believe that is the case? You know, I, I'm, I I do spend quite a lot of time pondering that because uh, I it, it sort of dawned on me that, you know, in my 20s, I was celebrated for showing up in lingerie. I was getting a lot of money for it and everybody loved me. And in my 50s, I, I still think I look pretty good in lingerie. And and but the reaction is reviled. Which is interesting you say that because I know that you've said we've lost touch of what real age looks like. Do you believe that's because of social media? What do you believe is the reason why? Oh, well, I'm not sh I'm not exactly sure that it's because of social media, but I do think it's because of media in general. I do think that uh, women uh, a certain age uh, in the media are represented as looking a permanent 39. Uh, the actresses, news anchors, uh, everybody that you see in the media is an incredible looking whatever age they are but they that always translates to they look younger it's not that they look 55 they look amazing because they look 39 while they are 55. so i do think that women that look their age who actually represent their age that have the wrinkles and move their faces and you know not everything is firm uh, there's a much less of a representation and it's a lot less celebrated because aging, um, actually visibly aging, I, I guess is, is nothing to celebrate. Uh, making it look like you're not aging is what seems to be uh, celebrate celebration worthy. When you post one of your photos with no makeup, with your hair in its natural state, what are you celebrating there? I'm actually doing it because I am trying to get confidence the confidence that i was hoping would come with age that's what i'm trying to do because putting pictures of myself the way i actually really look on social media makes me have to sort of deal with well that is what i look like i'm not lying to people i'm not posting these filtered great shots of myself and then they see me for real and go god you don't look anything like your pictures i'm sort of trying to come to terms with that this is how I look. This is this is who I am now. This is what I look now. You talk about feeling invisible. Was that related to aging and how you felt people viewed you? I would say yes, because, well, first of all, I mean, it sort of starts at home, you know, when maybe your husband um, starting to mistake you for the coffee table. It's something you walk around and, and is useful, but not, it's not particularly desirable anymore. And then in the in the then you walk out into the world and you realize that that little bit of tension that exists when you walk down the street as a uh, you know person in your twenties or in your thirties or even in your forties there's just like a there's a people sort of take you in and they uh, there's like an instant little judgment you know guys go is she hot is she not girls go. Do I want her as a friend? Do I like her handbag? There's a little recognition thing that happens. And that seizes when you are when you start looking 40-ish and 50-ish. Mm, <laughs> Paulina's gonna stay around and be joined by her friend, director, producer, best-selling author Justine Bateman joins the conversation. 
to talk about what it means to age. How do you age gracefully and how do we even measure it? We'll be back. Supermodel Paulina Poroskova, and she's sharing her honest beliefs on getting older in the spotlight. Paulina's friend, producer, filmmaker, and author Justine Bateman also has some strong thoughts she has shared regarding aging, and she's sharing them in her new book, Face, One Square Foot of Skin. I was elated when creases emerged across the tops of my cheeks when I smiled, when I saw the promising beginnings of small bags under my eyes when the skin loosened on my neck. One summer, I even noticed a real bonus of cleavage creases on my upper chest from the sun. I was finally beginning to look like the kinds of women I thought were the most interesting and the most attractive. You can imagine how surprised I was to find that many people disagreed. I'm not surprised. Joining us from her home in Los Angeles, Justine Bateman. Justine, thank you so much for joining the conversation. You know, people get hooked up on, on words and terms, and there's so much when we say aging gracefully. It's never been a term I'm a fan of because I honestly don't know what that means. And you take on the, the verbiage we use and how we even treat ourselves when we describe the aging process. Was there a moment in your life, other than those that you described there, that really compelled you to write this book and speak up about it? For me, uh, in my first book, uh, Fame, the Hijacking of Reality, there's one chapter where I talked about where I, um, I Googled myself, big mistake, and uh, the autocomplete was Justin Bateman looks old. And I was like, oh, really? What it did is really mess with my head some of the things that were said and the fact that I absorbed those ideas and made them beliefs inside myself. And I did the work that I usually do on anything that pushes my buttons, wherein I get down to the root fear of why I pulled that idea in and made it a belief. So once I did all that work on that particular topic, I was like, you know, now let's, let's look at society. Like why, why in society is the idea that an older woman's face needs to be fixed such a firmly rooted belief? So the book goes into this 47 short stories. It goes into all the possible roots root fears that have caused people to bring that idea in as a belief that their faces need to be fixed. Because I, I don't think any women's woman's face needs to be fixed at all. When you talk about the root fears, I'm sure they're all individual and they have different meanings. For me, aging as a 50-year-old with a toddler, I instantly think of not being around to see my son when he's 50. I don't think mm -hmm. of my face. I actually happen to have a mom, though, who's 71 and looks like she's 40. So I figure, hopefully, I have some of that DNA going on. But aging for many, it hits a nerve. So when you Google yourself and it hit that nerve, what was the root cause of it? Because I'm sure it is not the same for every woman when someone says, you look older or you look a little older. Well, for me in that one, I won't go into too much detail because it's kind of involved uh, in the book in my book, Fame, um, that had more to do with me wanting to make them right, these people that were criticizing me and me wrong, because of uh, they were talking about me as if I was famous. I mean, it had to do with like uh, clinging to a uh, little bit of fame. And it's better explained in that book, because that's about the, the life cycle of fame, you know, in particular, the descent of fame, you know, when you, when you lose the fame. But later times where I've looked in the mirror and gone like, oh, I've got this going on, or my neck is, you know, this is happening here or whatever, or under my eyes or whatever, anytime that pushes my buttons, I go, okay, it's not about this. That's why the subtitle is uh, one square foot of skin, because mm -hmm. it's not about this one square foot of skin. It's about what, what I think that means. If people think I'm old, then therefore, and I got to fill in the blank. I, I think your confidence is celebrated because it is viewed as refreshing and as the back of the book said, brave, brilliant, and unflinchingly honest. That was Mary Louise Parker who said that on your book, that we have to look at the conversation of aging as something brave is still very fascinating to me. Well, to look like you're aging is what's brave. 
That there's a difference. I mean, aging is a privilege. We all know that. We all understand that. But to look like you're aging, like you're enjoying to go there and you're going on that ride, that is still only reserved for men. Indeed. I think it is there's an absolute opportunity for anyone to just grab onto it and just say, like, even if you just spend like five minutes, you don't even have to spend a whole day thinking this way, but just like five minutes going, yeah. I look great. I look great. <laughs> and then notice what comes up. What fear comes up? Like, oh my God, if I walk around thinking that X, Y, Z will happen. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be taken aback. Someone will reject me and I'll be taken aback. But whatever it is, that's how I go through it. Like whatever irrational fear comes up, I got to write it down or say it out loud or something so that it can then, I can expose it. It can start to erode. Well, this is a level of empowerment, I think, to your point that you're hitting home with this book. I mean, the way you are thinking is a way of empowerment that is not in the zeitgeist, is not, you know, often uh, the headline of how we discuss aging. I mean, I think, you know, the effort with the book was to sort of lay out, like, why did we get from facelifts being unusual, say, in the 60s, 70s, and even early 80s, to... Yes, you should definitely have a facelift. You should definitely do all this work on your face. It's just a matter of when you're going to start. And I just thought, wait a minute, why are we, this is psychotic. Why are we even suggesting that all these women need to fix their faces? So I wanted to get into um, what those root reasons could be. In, and hopefully it'll help women to sort of um, dispel this idea that this is how they should be thinking about their faces. Just give them an alternative way to think about themselves as an option. It's a fascinating conversation. The book, Justine, is outstanding. Paulina, Justine, thank you so much. Justine's book, by the way, Face, One Square Foot of Skin, is available now.